Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I hope that you're great on this Sunday morning and ready for our living room life group together. Um, this week, we're going to talk about something that is super cool. Um, last week, we talked about Jesus calling his disciples and how we are supposed to be um, disciples as well and how we're supposed to give up things to follow Jesus. And so, um, but this week, we're going to talk about Jesus beginning his ministry. And at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus performed miracles. Jesus performed miracles throughout his entire ministry. But when he first started, there were several miracles that he performed um, in people's lives to heal them. And so um, you're going to see as we talk this morning that um, Jesus grew in popularity and so much so that he would have to not go into a town. He would stay on the outside of a town and people would come to him and he would heal them. And, and we see throughout scripture that he made people who were blind. He allowed them to see um, people who couldn't walk. He healed them and they could walk again. Um, he even raised people from the dead. And so we're going to see Jesus perform these amazing miracles um, in the scripture. And so one of the first um, miracles that Jesus performed is that he drove out an unclean spirit. And so you can see Jesus with the man right there. And an unclean spirit um, was in this man and causing him to cause issues throughout the city. So Jesus decides to to heal this man of his unclean spirit. And so um, the spirit knew who Jesus was. The spirit asked, have you come to destroy us, Jesus? Because we know that you're the Holy One. And so Jesus said, be quiet and come out of him. And immediately the man was freed <clears throat> of the unclean spirit. And so people began to see, people knew that this man was um, possessed by this unclean spirit. And so they knew that he was free and, cl and cleansed of that spirit. And so they came and they wondered what was going on. And the man told them that Jesus was the one who had healed him. And then next we see <clears throat> Jesus goes into another town and he heals Peter's. Peter was one of his disciples, Peter's mother-in-law. And so... Um, she was very ill. She had fever. Um, she got sick and all Jesus did was he came into the room and he touched her and she began to, to be well again. And so he, he cleansed people of their illnesses. He made them better. Um, in a time where there, there wasn't other options for people who were sick, um, Jesus was the healer for them. And so this began to draw a crowd as well. And then next, Jesus cleansed a leper. And so a leper, a leper, leprosy was a, a sickness of the skin. And so they had this, this rash and these boils and all of this stuff on their skin. And it was contagious. And so people could get it. And so no one wanted to be around <clears throat> the people who had leprosy. Um, it was a very shameful disease. It was very, um, they were cast out from their communities when they had this disease. And so the man comes to Jesus and says, Lord, if you are willing, make me clean. And so Jesus says, I am willing, be clean. And so the man immediately, his body is freed of the, the leprosy. His skin is clear again. Um, and he says, he, Jesus tells the man, don't tell anybody about this, but go to the temple and show the priest and offer a gift <clears throat> that Moses has commanded you. So before this, the man was not allowed in the temple and he couldn't make sacrifices. And so now that he's clean, Jesus has told him to go into the temple and to make sacrifices for the first time now that he's clean again. But the man was so excited that he was cleansed of his leprosy that he went out and he told everybody that he saw what had happened. And so much so that Jesus could not even go into a town anymore um, because people would flock to him and it would be chaos. And so Jesus would stay on the outskirts of towns and people would come to him. And then over the course of his ministry, we see so many other miracles. We see him turning um, five loaves and two fish into enough to feed 5,000 people. Um, we see him <clears throat> just healing people in ways that they had never been healed before. 
And so obviously Jesus rose to fame. And, and Jesus was somebody that people wanted to see. And one of the things that I like to think about um, in my life is if I had seen Jesus perform those miracles, what would I think? Um, if I had been there to witness him healing this man of this leprosy, what would I think? Um, how would that change the way that I view and see Jesus? Um, and so I want us to remember that Jesus was a powerful person, um, that because Jesus was both fully God and fully man, he could perform these miracles and heal people of their illnesses. And so one of the reasons why Jesus healed people is because people are special and they were made because they're made in the image of God to know him. Um, and so God saw, Jesus saw these people who were hurting, who needed to be healed of their illnesses, and he healed them because he knew that they were special, that they were created in the image of God, and ultimately, Jesus wanted them to know him. They want, he wanted them to believe in him, and so he would heal them. And, and, bec and because he healed them, all the people who were watching would also come to believe in him. Um, now, some people saw the miracles performed and they still didn't believe in Jesus, but some did. And so Jesus had a powerful ministry with miracles. And so I want to talk about our new memory verse. The past couple weeks, we've been talking about a memory verse in John 3, 30, which says, um, he must increase and I must decrease. But now our memory verse is John 3, 16. And I know that you know John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that anyone who believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And so this verse, um, seen in the context of Jesus' miracles, is huge. Um, God so loved the world that he sent his son, Jesus, the one who's performing these miracles. Um and that anyone who believes in him, believes in the miracles, believes in his life, believes in the things that he came to do for us, would have everlasting life. Um, and so, so the fact that we can go from death to life when we believe in Jesus is one of the coolest things ever. And so I want you to remember those things as you go about your day. Um, remember how powerful Jesus is, that Jesus still is in the business of miracles, that he still heals us, um, maybe not immediately and in ways that we think that he should, but Jesus is very near to us. He sees us in our hurting. He sees us in things that don't make sense. He sees us in chaos. Jesus has not forgotten you, and Jesus loves you more than you will ever know um, because, he sent his, because he died on the cross for you. So I want you to remember those things. Parents, as you are going about your day and you're experiencing this living room life group together, there's a couple questions that I want you to think about. How did Jesus' miracles show his care for creation? How did the fact that Jesus performed these miracles show that he cared about people? Do we need to see miracles to believe in Jesus? Why or why not? Um, what makes the fact that we don't see miracles now like we saw then um, different? How does that affect our belief in Jesus? In what ways does God reveal himself today? Um, since we don't see miracles um, like Jesus performed back then, um, how does God reveal himself to us today? Um, how are we experiencing his miraculous power around us all the time? And I know that we're in the midst of a season that seems chaotic and stressful, um, that seems like the world is being run more by fear than by um, the creator of all things. Um, how, how does Jesus' miraculous power change our thoughts in this time? Um, so I hope that you go about your day and you can find ways that, that Jesus is still performing miracles. Maybe they're not as blatant as healing a leper or or healing a sick woman, but that he is constantly at work around you. Um, be thinking of those things today and talk about how you can continue to look for um, miracles of Jesus in your life and in the lives of people around you. Um, I hope that you are having a great day. Um, know that we miss you. Um, we're so ready to be together again. Um, 
but I hope that you are blown away by the miracles of Jesus in your life today. Let's pray together. God, we love you and we're so thankful for who you are. We're grateful that you are still in the business of performing miracles, um, whatever that looks like in our life, God. Um, we trust you and we're thankful for the fact that you um, are always working. Even when we don't see it, Lord, you are doing a great work in the lives of us and in the lives of people around us. Um, Father, we're thankful that you love us and that you're near us and that you're always with us. God, we love you and we ask these things in your name. Amen. I hope that you have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye.